My conclusion is that this is the incorrect juncture for a cup of tea. Please do not imbibe yourself at this time. I would greatly appreciate your future consultation to decide whether it is, or is not, time for tea. I couldn't ignore that whistle when Florence was loud, and in fact it got an awful lot worse just picking up the constant switching on and off. But luckily, with the wonderful Arduino, you can set the timers to a different frequency. If you Google it, it'll give you loads of information. I Googled it and found this very handy piece of information. I had it set originally to 3.9 kilohertz. I've now changed it to 31 kilohertz and you can't hear it anymore, which is great. It's just too high to be picked up. In fact, 31 kilohertz is very high even for human ears to hear. When it comes, the default setting, as you can see it says default there, is 488 hertz, which is really quite slow. And what I found was I had to change it the first time because whenever I made a video of Florence and her machine, it flickered. The high definition camera was so quick it would actually pick her up, pick, pick up the LEDs flickering on and off. So I sorted that out, but listen to that. That's with the amplifier turned up to full volume and her not saying anything. What an interesting tune. I was thinking, what could that be? And then noticed the flickering light effect down here. And that's what it is. It's all these LEDs switching on and off. And again, they draw quite a lot of current. And that's putting loads of interference on the power supply line. So what I'm going to do now is do some research into how to get noise off DC power lines. Some more experimentation later and this is with the volume turned up full on the amplifier and the amplifier running from the 5 volt supply that's doing everything else. Not a sausage, nothing. Very very faint hiss but that's fine. I've now started running the sound board from its own supply. I'm running just the sound board from my big bench power supply. After much fiddling around with all sorts of chopping of wires and connecting of wires and all sorts, I've come to the conclusion that I need to move the sound board just above the amplifier, well out of the way, and I'm going to connect the power supply to the sound board directly to the amplifier, because I've found that made an incredible difference to how it picked up all the noise. I wanted to replace this little preset potentiometer one of these, which is the same thing electronically or electrically, just much more solid and able to take the forces of repeatedly being adjusted. First thing I did was to drill a hole 12.5mm diameter through Florence's cabinet to take the rear part of this lovely little turned oak doorknob, which you can get on eBay and the internet and things. And that's great. These stain up really nicely and that is 12.5mm diameter. I've also drilled out the centre to 6mm which is just larger than the 5.9mm of the potentiometer shaft. Then I've got a piece of wood drilled a 12.5mm hole halfway through and the other half is 9.5mm because that screw thread is 9.5, well 10 almost millimetres and a 9.5mm hole is tight enough for this to firmly tighten into, to twist into. And this is going to go... Ooh, that wants to make people feel too giddy and ill. Where's the hole gone? So that is going to glue on like that. That means I'm going to have the oak knob on the outside and the potentiometer seated in that. And I'm going to glue that on with super glue. The reason I've drilled it separately is because it's far easier to line up. Now it's separate and there's a bit of movement. I can put the glue on this, line, put the um, the knob in, and then just line it all up really nicely, and then let the glue set. Here's the actual knob I'm going to use. I've stained it with the normal dark oak wood stain, very dark, and um, because it's untreated, it soaks it up really nice. Then gives a really nice rich colour. I've cut down the potentiometer shaft so it fits into the knob and doesn't stick too far for out and screwed it by hand into the block of wood. It doesn't need any glue or anything because the thread ensures it's really stiff. The next job is to glue that in place using 
the knob, I'll push the knob onto this, but not glue it, just to line it all up with the cabinet. So here's the block and potentiometer glued on from the inside, and here's the visible knob on the outside that I used just to line it up while the glue was setting. One other thing I did was to drill a pilot hole through the centre of this knob on the lathe first so I knew I had it, the hole lined up perfectly um, with the centre of the oak knob as it didn't have a hole through it. You can buy them with holes through and I assume that they're perfectly lined up. I did that and I just counter drilled the top a little bit because I had um, the head of a brass screw left over from something so I'm going to fill up the hole just by gluing that in and also add a nice little design feature as well. Another really useful tool or um, machining aid if you haven't got a lathe and things or just to help you centre things up is a V-block. It's got so many uses. I used this one once I drilled the pilot hole because the knob wouldn't fit in the lathe just to line it up and I knew it was going to be vertical and once I got the pilot hole I could just drill down running out of hands here just drill down and it would guide the drill into the centre and if I held it firmly against the V and the V was flat on the surface of the pillar drill I knew it would be at right angles so perfect really useful thing another use for the V block if you've got a right angle jig on the sanding machine and you want to sand some of the this bit down to make sure you don't get it angled sit it on the V block and use that just to guide it up against the abrasive surface it's so useful all completed, all shipshape and Bristol fashion. You can see there's the three wires that come from the back of the potentiometer down to the connections on the amplifier. I am very impressed with this amplifier. If you ever need one for some project, the power is incredible. And the fact that I've decided to use it with an analog volume control, or you can connect it using all these other pins to an Arduino or some sort of microcontroller and get that to control volume and things of that nature. So there's the amplifier, there's the sound board, nice short cables linking together and that's great. Let's have a look at the back. As with all self-respecting automatons, Florence's projection control goes up to 11. Clean it up with some rubbing alcohol and we'll put it onto Florence's cabinet. So it's almost like zero is normal wax disc, wax drum automaton and 11 is a bionic automaton. 11! Fabulous! No. Plug in the humidity sensor. And then hopefully, look at that, that is perfect, everything fits beautifully. Replace the top bit with the blue tack holding it in place. My name is Florence, thank you for your inquiry. Please wait while I consult my gauges. Conclusion is that this is the incorrect juncture for a cup of tea. Please do not imbibe yourself at this time. I would greatly appreciate your future consultation to decide whether it is or is not time for tea. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. Please remember that we're going to be at the Whitby Steampunk Festival of the weekend of the 8th and 9th of February. You can come along and see all the machines working for real and also meet Florence for the very first time. How exciting. I also have a website steamhead.co.uk where you can find out more about all the machines and the background information and a YouTube channel where you can see making of videos of all the different things that I've made just like this one and an online shop on the website and an Etsy shop as well.